one world over wherever you are in the different countries in the different continents in the different time zones it's such a pleasure to have all of you this evening wonderful evening very pleasant evening and i pray to almighty from our chamber international chamber for service industry that world over there should be happiness there should be wellness there should be good health and people should take care of each other the best possible way we all should support each other the best part whatever we can do so ladies and gentlemen during this pandemic during this coronavirus this is 314th webinar making education relevant like doctors nurses paramedical people they are great warriors i personally feel that education has also moved ahead now and with education is blended skills with skills blended competencies so when we talk about that over here our teachers our principals our educators our counselors and technical experts and particularly those that are imparting various skills world over they have also moved on because flip learning digital learning techo based learning or blended learning outside classroom learning all that has happened so we extend a very hearty welcome to all our brothers and sisters from world over people those are joining us from canada latin america united states europe central asia mauritius seychelles coming to central asia south asia asean uh, south uh, korea then taiwan then african continent and then of course beautiful india bharat all the different states wherever you are joining us from it's a pleasure to have you and ladies and gentlemen while extending a very hearty welcome to our distinguished guest this evening our esteemed guest mr satish narayanan he is the graphic design technology expert and ceo design media school this program is coming live to you if you go on to youtube channel and all the young girls under the women empowerment those are joining us this evening we would request you also kindly open your youtube channel and send hello to channel as well as to your friends as well as to all the people you are known to share in your groups keep come just come on the gs motivator so that now onward you start getting our chambers complete details and you become the part of this journey you are on board and all of us we are together so with these words ladies and gentlemen extending a very hearty welcome to all of us so international chamber for service industry and media entertainment skill council mr mohit soni the ceo a very dynamic and a very vibrant and a very creative and innovative person and uh, this particular month series we are moving ahead we were earlier with the wellness with the health sector then with the entrepreneurship sector of the sector skill council and now we are with the entertainment skill council this particular program we move on so our chamber international chamber for service industry since 1994 and we are proud of it now at present more than 30 million non resident indians world over those are we understand during pandemic our thought processes business and everything is affected but from india we always believe in vasudev kutumbakam that means the entire world is one family now ladies and gentlemen heartiest congratulations to india's prime ministers india's education minister and all the stakeholders those are in education they are doing great job new education policy and with that comes the skills now the next global crisis we predict is going to be on water conservation water strategies and water sharing so thereby every drop of water we would request let's say given empowerment very very important unless we do not empower our ladies we cannot empower the global economy and the world our chamber from morning 9 till evening 9 we are in your service all of us together from our chamber we extend you very warm welcome this is our entire weeks program what you see monday tuesday wednesday thursday four days we have got youth and empowerment teachers empowerment then friday we have got from singapore water management strategies then saturday we have got from chicago swami vivekanand education and youth and sunday we have got micro small and the medium enterprise 
Then there are some special programs. Saturday, you have got Ayurveda. Sunday, you have got Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Sunday, you have got India ASEAN series. And finally, Sunday evening, every Sunday, our chamber brings non-resident Indians together on a common platform, deliberating, and they are trying to give the roadmap what all should be done with the new education policy in India, in school, in colleges, in universities, in ITIs, in polytechnics, wherever you talk about, including the skills which are being imparted. And on the popular request from 400 million plus people, in India, we have started a special program, Indian Standard Time, 12.30 to 1.30, Monday to Friday, where we are talking about aaj ki yuva pidi kya chahti hai, aaj ki youth kya chahte hai, unko kya chahiye, un bachcho ko kya aage ki roshti nazar aati hai, kis tarikhe ke job, startups and all that. And then of course, ladies and gentlemen, we have also got uh, the ADU Summit, you know, when you talk about we keep organizing from time to time. The next program is coming on 21st of November. So let's move ahead. Food, food processing, export, everything when we talk about. Now, the new order of the world is it's going to be a blended learning, flip learning. You've got to be taking care of your food, start growing your own vegetables. You've got to take care of your health and wellness and then positive thoughts, everything. And the world will move to now new order. B2B will be no more business to business. It will be back to basics of life. So ladies and gentlemen, whatever human mind can conceive and believe it can achieve, let's be together. Every evening, we get our stars of the evening. These are the five stars today. Kavanya, Anishka, Sanyogita, and Kushmi, then Simran. They are joining us this evening under the dynamic, dedicated leadership of Colonel Manon, who is our Southern India head, and he takes care of all the activities of the chamber in entire Southern India. So we are proud of him as a teacher, as an educator, as a principal, as a technocrat. Should you wish to come on this particular platform or should you wish to bring your students on this platform, you are advised to get in touch with Colonel Manon. He will further guide you how to proceed. So we will be meeting these five little children this evening. So we are proud, our resource person, our distinguished guest this evening is Mr. Satish Narayanan. He is the graphic design technology expert, CEO of the design media. He has been the expert from India at the world scale since 2013 for the graphic design technology, the founder of design media school and co-founder and CEO of the Nectar Pixel Studio. He represented India for, when I talk about, now all the countries are listed over here. You can see it yourself, what a decoration and how much effort he has put in, ladies and gentlemen. So we extend a very hearty welcome to him. Join me in welcoming Mr. Satish Narayanan and five little dignitaries this evening, the girls, those are joining us. With these words, we extend a very hearty welcome to Mr. Satish Narayanji and kindly take on the floor. The world is yours now. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Gulshan. And uh, it's been so nice to see uh, what are the kind of work which you guys are doing yet. And it, it reminds me of what are the activities which we do uh, as a Rotarian. So I'm a Rotarian and uh, I'm a past president in Rotary also. So the similar kind of a projects like women empowerment. Recently, we did a project uh, during this COVID time. There are a lot of teachers in a remote village and schools. They don't know how to handle the online classes, actually. So we conducted a train the trainer program through just connecting through WhatsApp. So surprisingly, we've got 33,000 people have registered actually, and it went on for two days training actually. So wow. it, was a, it was a tremendous amount of effort put in by our Rotary team, Rotary team and we, it was very well received also. Today, a very, very remote village people, they know how to use Zoom and how to conduct the training. Zoom or maybe uh, like Google Classroom kind of a thing. So that's the kind of training we did. And another thing, the one which very important uh, aspects which you have brought in about the water conservation. So we've been constantly doing uh, water conservation projects as well in terms of adapting some villages and uh, installing uh, water ATMs there. And uh, there are various projects which we do. So 
and i'm so nice to hear you guys are doing the similar kind of a job worldwide and you have a reach to worldwide and uh, i'm really uh, it's a privilege for me to come and uh, address uh, uh, the audience here and thank you so much for the opportunity so before proceeding so i would like to share few uh, slides of my i just would like to take the audience through my story actually what how i have grown up so if you can allow me to uh, share my screen i think you need to give permission no oh, all yours all yours no 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 you have to give permission go to your share screen bottom just uh, click that share screen uh, it doesn't require otherwise okay no it it require you need to uh, ex- so you have to uh, now i can yeah it should not it should not acha yes now i got now got okay <laughs> yeah this is your slide yes so can you see my uh, screen yeah yeah, yeah. that okay. is the graphic design technology wala na yeah then uh, this slide can you see Yeah, that is the okay. uh, the, the some the pictures from two thousand eighteen, twelve, thirteen, eight. No, 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 no. That is your slide. Ah. Oh, okay. you have to, you have to uh, uh, stop sharing. Actually, actually, with due respect, uh, once you are there as a panelist, na, yeah, you don't, you don't require any share screen. With due respect. No, now I I have yeah. shared it. Yeah. You can you can see my screen. Okay. Just okay. Just. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, very good evening to all of you. Uh, just to give you a small brief about my background, uh, it's what you can uh, see on the screen. These are my childhood days, actually. So, I've been uh, uh, basically an artist, actually. So, uh, during my childhood days, I have developed the skill of uh, uh, drawing, painting. So, these are school days. Uh, I used to get some uh, rewards and uh, recognitions from state government. and some of the uh, national kind of a competition so con- consecutively from 6th to standard onwards i used to win medals certificates for artistics so once uh, i uh, completed my 10 plus 2 i am always interested in going in a similar kind of a course where skill oriented course where i really don't want to go into medical or engineering or something like that so that's when i went on to choose this college this is i am i originally belongs to southern part of india it's called as uh, tamil nadu chennai and this is one of the oldest college in india so this college is uh, founded during 1850 it's almost 170 years old college it is government college of fine arts some of the great uh, rai choudhury rembrandt many uh, great artists have actually uh, passed out of this college so i did my graduation here so initially those days uh, it's a uh, five years of an under graduation and two years of a master graduation so it is pure out and out it's a completely a practical oriented course where we learn painting sculpture ceramic and uh, uh, illustration sketching so you you might have seen the previous one the right side picture on top of my head there is one a painting is there that uh, uh, sunset on boat so that was my painting so after joining this college what i have learned is i have just met some of the great gurus actually so this is one of uh, my guru Mr. Arulerson, he has got tremendous amount of skills in terms of artistic knowledge, also craft knowledge, also. Right side, what you see is he is actually making a portrait of uh, Mumbai University Vice Chancellor, Mr. Santosh Deshmukh. So using nail, so he does portraits actually, and he is very good in paper craft. He is very good in clay modeling. He is very good in art in illustration. So he is currently the uh, pr- principal of uh, College of Fine Arts, Kumbakonam. So he he. Uh, was my guru and he is still my guru because when i started my own company i want him to inaugurate my uh, studio so i brought him from chennai to pune and he is the one inaugurated my studio as well so uh, there are a lot of many such gurus which you, they have shown way uh, during my career time and they have actually helped me in uh, fine tuning my skills actually so after learning from such masters what you see these are my some of my uh, uh, paintings so what you see some of uh, this is one pencil sketch is there oil on canvas and then poster color acrylic color any medium you take so so i mastered the skill of uh, doing uh, painting and drawing so i used to exhibit these paintings in many uh, exhibitions and uh, used to sell paintings uh, does a lot of commercial works during the college days that's one of the big uh, advantage when you are uh, learning uh, skill based education so while learning if you are really mastered the skill you also have an advantage of actually earning 
so this is i was talking about way back in uh, so i started uh, college in 1989 and i passed out in 1994 actually so it's a five years course and after that after two three years of a break i did the master graduation so during these days uh, if you if you i don't know how many of you if you are uh, youngsters maybe in the age of 18 or 20 you might not remember so during those days there is no google there is no mobile phone actually so whatever you wanted to really learn so you either have to reach out to the masters you, you'll have to reach out to people who understands the skills who are mastered in that skills and sit with them and learn today if you want anything you have an option of going into google and then searching for uh, whatever the inputs which you required but those days that opportunity is not there so what we did is we really learned the skill we actually have uh, sat with people actually and understood the techniques what they are using that's how we learned the skill so once i've graduated i so I, i did my uh, uh, graduation in industrial design specialized in textile designing so this is during 1996 what you see the first ever abroad trip which i've done like uh, i was in uh, germany heim, heim textiles i was very excited uh, to go and represent our country in heim textile uh, fair and uh, uh, so my job is to more of from the designer part of it and techno commercial executive a little bit of marketing and sales also i used to do actually that is uh, uh, because i have taken a graduation in textile designing so i went into that particular uh, field three years i worked in that and when i became a merchandiser it is more of a managerial job there nothing skill about it actually so it's i have to manage the des- design team i have to actually like do costing consumption so these are the kind of work so that was not exciting for me though i have i was very well paid during that time but at the same time there was there was no job satisfaction so that is when what i did is like during 1998 so i uh, thought of uh, shifting my career because while i was in college i used to go for ad agencies actually so and then i used to work as a part time artist there so that's how uh, i started my career in 1992 i started as a graphic designer so every year i used to work for one ad agency and leave the job and that particular year uh, final year exam after giving the exam i joined another ad agency basically i wanted to learn different skills from different ad, ad agencies that's the uh, motto behind actually resigning and joining another ad agency so parallelly i have developed this uh, textile skills also but once uh, during 98 so when i became a merchandiser good earnings but job satisfaction was not there that is when i actually resigned and joined in uh, a company called uh, pentamedia graphics where uh, we used to do animation visual effects and all so these are some of the uh, Uh, like uh, what is graphic designing those who are uh, today attending the session it is basically uh, brand building rebranding logo designing stationery it starts from this and it's a huge world by itself actually so i'll explain more about graphic designing as i progress uh, further so there is another as, uh, uh, option is there ui ux design today this is like for the past uh, i would say decade uh, ever since the internet and uh, Uh, uh social media uh, uh, becomes boom so the user interface design and user experience design requirement uh, is become more so all the software companies which you see like infosys wipro or cognizant these are software companies they have a dedicated ui ux design team so as a graphic designer you have an option of going into this ui ux design as well apart from doing the typical graphic design part of it so then i uh, while i was working in ad agency i used to do ad films corporate films actually so these are one of the shoots which i have participated actually so first ever ads which i have shot is narasu's copy ad so i was involved myself in doing the production of uh, ad film and uh, commercials films and then uh, slowly once this visual effects industry came and so uh, like I, i i would say the first ever film which i did is jeans i don't know how many of you remember the south in uh, most famous film uh, in south and the one f- song is their mukabla mukabla song it is like uh, uh, prabhu deva the great dancer prabhu deva used to dance without head only the cap and so that particular film that's a jeans so that is the first film which we have extensively worked visual effects actually and then we uh, i did lot of animation films as well actually like a lot of uh, film for the domestic industry there are six films which we have done sindbad beyond the veil of mist and uh, uh, buddha and uh, krishna little krishna shaktiman like these kind of an animated shows also i have worked on so <coughs> my career spanning of almost 25 years i i i i was an hardcore artist and got into advertising field 
doing the graphic designing as well as film making as well as animation visual effects all aspects of it and uh, when i was uh, in a company uh, uh, i was a producer in terms of recruiting people so we we did large amount of interviews uh, uh, for the freshers so what we uh, discovered is that, uh, there are a lot of institutes are there across india but uh, the the students are not very well trained actually the more of a theoretical part of it or maybe the software knowledge is been taught so that's when i felt the need of actually a proper finishing school type where uh, somebody can come and learn the proper skills and finally when they uh, pass out of that particular institute they should be industry ready so that's the concept that which i have launched during 2016 i have launched my own uh, company called design media and entertainment solutions where we had this design media and entertainment school that is primarily into teaching animation visual effects graphic designing game design all these things and uh, design media and entertainment solution company i had a small incubation center where i used to take commissioned work for visual effects uh, graphic designing and game then uh, had around 8 to 10 professionals working for it along with the professionals i gave an opportunity for the students to work on the live projects that's how the entire concept of this institute which i have developed now today uh, it's been almost like 3 4 years within a very short time of span we have grown as one of the uh, most sought after academy in the country actually that is the uh, strength so when i was uh, working in my previous company so this world skills uh, india opportunity came to me it is during 2012 where uh, uh, nsdc approached us uh, uh, they said like we wanted somebody who can train graphic designers to take them to the international level so that is when first time india participated in world skills international for the graphic design category so i don't know how many of you know about this world skills international world skills is an organization uh, they've been conducting skills olympics almost for 60 years now it is started in almost like 1950 uh, the first competitions so ever since it's been almost like 60 competitions this happens once in two years in multiple country actually over a period of 60 years 60 years the the reach and the participation from many countries are tremendous today uh, last last year in russia we had around 63 countries participated 63 countries sent their comp- uh, competitors uh, national winners to their country so this is unlike the sports olympics uh, you you cannot take multiple candidates for one particular skills for example i am representing graphic designing i can train only one candidate and india can take only one candidate for graphic designer so what you see on the stage actually these candidates are from different different categories from one for beauty therapy one for automobile engineering another one is for cookery and graphic designing like multiple uh, skills so people uh, represent so my job is to train first ever time uh, i got an opportunity from nsdc and mesc to train the candidate for uh, 2013 leipzig olympic uh, we uh, initially when i took up as a challenge actually i thought okay this is going to be like one among the kind of competition today how you are you may not be aware of what is world skills when you see this picture then you literally uh, can feel it is like as good as olympics actually it's the same state of mind i was having that time so i don't know what exactly is world skills is all about but when i did the research on internet and then th- that's when i really uh, felt the seriousness of this particular competition and during 2013 first time india participated in graphic design i am the expert and i was the expert and one mr arun raj balasubramaniam he was the candidate actually so he uh, stood as a national winner after uh, winning nationals he came to me for a 6 uh, months comprehensive training so he came to pune and i trained him for 6 month and I, i went as an expert he was my candidate with no expectations we gave a tough fight and uh, so first time uh, in 2013 graphic designing we have won the uh, medallion of excellence and he has also won a gold medal for the best of the nation two medals so that was a pride moment actually so because of it is first time so for me also candidate also we really don't know what is the kind of competition how intensive it is so that time for graphic designing we had 27 countries national champions were uh, attending the so this competition is very very in- intensive and as well as time bound it is not that they just simply they'll give you a task and whatever the time you want to finish you can finish it's not like that the competition is spread over four days so each day you will have around 6 hours of time so over a period of four days there are 22 hours task 
that is divided into four days. So, so we have four different modules in graphing design. First day, it is more of a corporate identity design. Second day, it's more of an editorial design. Third day, it is more of a packaging design. And fourth day, it is advertising design. So each day, they'll be uh, giving one project actually. It is a, a, a question paper type. So you need to read the project and you need to execute the work. And at the end of the uh, sixth hour, you have to print out the entire materials which you have done. And then you'll have to display it on the table actually. For example, first day, if you're working on corporate identity design, so you'll be given a project, return project and some relevant inputs. You need to create a logo design for that. Not only the logo design, an entire brand guideline booklet you have to create and you need to create stationary items. Then take a printout of it and do a proper presentation, how you are going to present it to the ad agency. You need to put a masking, a nice presentation and keep it on the table. This everything needs to be performed on the uh, spot and there is no internet provided. The machines are all not internet access. They will give you the set of images. You just have to work with only those set of images. And then it's a time bound and they have a alarm sharp at 8 a.m. if it starts and then 2 p.m. it ends actually. So within that time, you need to complete the task. If you don't complete, you tend to lose a lot of marks actually. Like for that particular one day, all four days put together, total marks is 100 marks. So that sometimes one first day would be 26 marks, second day 22 marks, third day 25 marks, fourth day 25 marks, it's like that. For the 22 marks first day, there may be around uh, nothing less than 50 to 60 criteria are there. So in order to get the 22 marks, you need to fulfill all the 60 criteria. Each criteria might have a mark of 0 0.22, 0 0.20, 0 0.50, 1.20. It's like that. So if, if you lose any of those particular criteria, you tend to lose a mark. It's the same for the all four days. That is how intensive with that competition is about. It's about you need to understand the entire aspects of graphic designing, not only the creative aspects of it, you also have to be technically qualified because for example, you need to understand if I am designing certain design, so which platform it is going to be printed, whether it is going to be printed on plastic paper or it's going to be printed on cardboard or it's going to be printed on maybe a, a, a cloth. So accordingly, you need to export as a PDF actually. There are various PDFs are there. So uh, there are various technical aspects which you need to really uh, get thorough. So that was the biggest challenge because in India, the traditional teaching methodology, so they teach more of a graphic design aesthetic part of it. None of the institute teach the technology technical part of it where that belongs to the printers actually. So because what we used to do, we design and we give it to the printer. It's printer's headache to actually print. So printer converts it into different PDF and whatever the formats are like that. But in world skills, they expect you to do the printer's job also. So that's when it is very important for you to uh, understand the technical aspects, that intensive it is. So that's how the first time, it, this is Leipzig actually, so I went to uh, Germany and then uh, we won the medal uh, for the country and the gold medal and the uh, medallion of excellence. That was the first time. Since then, it has been consecutively for uh, graphic designing out of all the skills from India, which we are representing, only graphic designing, we have been winning medals, medallions and medals every year, actually. So 2013, we won medallion, 2000 medallion and gold medal for best of the nation. 2015, we won medallion. 2017, also, we have won medallion in Abu Dhabi. And last year, after having so much of experience, so I have mastered how to score, how to actually like narrow down the error of the candidate. And it was an intensive uh, training uh, given for uh, Sweta Ratanpura. It's almost one year. Sweta Ratanpura was my candidate in 2019. She was a graduate from NID, National Institute of Design. And after completing graphic design four years of an education, she came to Pune. She was trained in Design Media, my institute, for 10 months, almost eight to nine hours a day. That intensive it is. Imagine a person who has already completed four years of a graduation in graphic designing. After that, if I have to train, then the kind of skill level and the knowledge level which I have to actually uh, develop is very, very high. So that is what is, as, as a role of an expert, my job is to do that. It is not only preparing her for uh, uh, the skill set of it, graphic design skill set of it. I have to prepare her mentally also. I have to prepare her physically also because in India, the weather condition is we have seen only like hot 
or maximum of cold actually so but when we went to russia last time when we went to russia sometimes you end up uh, landing in germany when i went it was minus 15 degree so our students are not used to these kind of a climates and not only that you you will be reaching 4 5 days before the competition but at that time probably you might not get indian food you might have to get live with Indi- maybe like uh, russian food or maybe uh, european food kind so you are not used to that kind of uh, food so my job as an expert i also have to prepare her mentally and physically so i need to prepare a diet chart for her uh, for example the competition area is so huge almost like i would say uh, from getting down from the bus to reach to our competition area we may have to walk 2 or 3 kilometers so sometimes our kids they have they are not used to walking actually so by the time they reach to the competition they get tired so these are the things which we need to take care of as as an expert my job is actually like when i was training i also used to train her physically she has to run uh, morning do jogging two hours we teach her yoga and meditation even in order to bring the uh, focus actually so we i prepare a diet chart actually so i look at what is the climate condition using the world uh, uh, weather condition so during that time what is going to be the weather so i need to prepare her. so for example if she is getting trained in one room if uh, when i am going to russia if it is going to be like let's say 5 degree celsius uh, climate so in india when i am training so i used to put the uh, ac in that 5 degree celsius and then train so that's the way basically we train so that intensive it is basically so these are the moments of uh, 2013 so now today this boy uh, arun raj balasubramaniam uh, immediately after com- coming from uh, germany so he got placement in one of the biggest uh, company called zoho corporation and uh, he has become the design director today uh, in one of the big multinational company and very good uh, earnings apart from earnings so he is handling a team of almost like 100 150 ui designers so that's like at the age of when he was in uh, germany he was 21 so today he is maybe 27 he just recently got married and he got a kid also just last month uh, just born baby he is uh, now earning around 40 lakhs per annum apart from that he also has a stake in the company so that's the story of not only arun raj even 2015 candidate sri ram baras bhim and 2017 simol alwa she is currently working in us in one of the biggest ad agency called pentagram so these are the kind of exposure we get so the last candidate uh, swetha ratanpura she joined samsung bangalore as a ui ux head and her in as a beginner she is earning around uh, 18 lakh salary per annum so this is not only the story of these winners even in national india skills national winners the top 10 winners because they get the kind of an exposure and training uh, to reach to the top 10 level so that training helps them to get tremendous amount of job opportunities actually so last year india skills uh, along with uh, swetha there were nine other candidates were there all of them are today working on some good multinational companies and they are earning good amount of money and they are doing really well tremendously well in a career so that is what it gives you the opportunity this world skills international it pushes your limit and it pushes actually uh, uh, it motivates you to ach- achieve something so once if you get into that habit even after coming back in your li- real life also as a career you really wanted to go uh, and achieve something every time you wanted to achieve so that i have seen with arun also Uh, simol alwa also even in swetha also so that habit is like inculcated in them and they really wanted to achieve more and more even in their career that is that is the best part of uh, this world skills trainings so this is as an expert so every year i get recognition from government of india as an outstanding achievement and i get cash awards and as well as uh, citation from this was when upa government was there so this is a small uh, story and a journey Uh, of uh, what i have achieved and uh, like uh, what is the kind of uh, skills which we are talking about so i would probably would like to have more of an interactive session because that i've just given you a brief actually any questions or that would be more helpful i can answer as much of as question as possible please thank you thank you thank you very much no few tips uh, would you like to give to the youngsters uh, uh children those are aspiring to get into this arena this field hmm. should be the prerequisites what Correct. what are the two three tips you would like to give them uh so prerequisites today uh, what i would uh, uh,
tell them because of this uh, internet world and social media so they are all getting uh, exposure across the globe actually so in yes. a way i would say uh, it, there is an advantage also but there is a disadvantage as well so the disadvantage is what i would say is there is no hungerness for learning actually there is no patience to learn and there is no experiment happening actually because everything they really wanted it within a time you just go to google and just find out what is happening kind so that was one big threat which i find that that habit now younger generations kids are not learning for example when i started my career in 1992 in ad agency so i would really like to share a small video because uh, this relates to more of my uh, uh, career also as because i've been in this field for almost 25 years can you see this video which i am playing now yes yes okay so you see this photoshop 25 years of photoshop so this why i am showing this video today we have internet today the technology has grown if we have to do a graphic designing there is plenty of opportunities are there you go to internet world you can download the temple uh, templates and all those things but those days 25 years ago how we did graphic designing if we have to do a layout actually this is a perfect example this is how i started actually i started my career in kannan advertising services way back in 1992 so i used to do exactly the same it is more of a manual work where we don't have computer that time we don't have photoshop only that time it was called as page maker one software was there that is also introduced during 1994 but before that it's everything manual you see this you can understand You know, 30 years ago. Are you getting the audio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, design was entirely different. It used to be all analog and all physical. When I look out on the landscape today and I see that, you know, everybody knows what Helvetica is. 12-year-olds have a concept of what typefaces are and rules or any of the terms that we used to use. It's amazing to me because it used to be such a small group that knew how to manage this physical labor to do any project. So I'm going to take for example this print ad and try to show what the process would be to recreate something like this. Now imagine I don't have this to begin with. I've got to sketch this out and and put it down to paper. So I've already done a bunch of hand-drawn sketches and kind of gotten the flavor of well I want a big image and I think I'll have a headline here and this here. We're going to set this aside and walk through how to do this. Now the first thing I need to know is how big this is. Now I've already measured it and I've decided it is 10 by 12. So using these rapidographs, which were these very fine pens. Now on the end of all the rapidographs is a numeral. This is 0.80. 0.80 is reflecting the term that this is a 0.80 rule, just like you would have a 0.25 rule or 0.5 rule or a 1 point rule in in Photoshop or in Designer or Illustrator. Um there is no such thing in these as a 0.175 rule. They are all rounded numbers, which is why we base those on that today. Now these pens were a mess, frankly. Um you fill them up yourself with ink and you can see I'm already getting ink all over my hands. Um they came out of this like this. And in there, I'm not taking it out because it'll fly all over the place, is ink that I have filled up with this little container. And the ink flows through here Those until it dries out. It an and then I have to wash it and make sure nothing's dried up in there and do it again. So I've used my rapidograph and I've I've already measured out the size of this ad and I've used my T square and my triangle to draw these lines and I've made sure that it's all squared up and nice and neat. And then I've used my my triangle to draw the other sides as well. Not as simply as setting up a document and calling it 9 by 12. It's like I had to know exactly what size it was. If I got that wrong, it'd go off and the art would be the wrong size and it wouldn't work. So now that I've figured out the size of my piece and I have my rough sketch of what I want to do, I've probably talked to a photographer and I've said, "You know, um um you know, Betty, I I need a photograph of of this young lady and and I want her to hold a camera um and I'd love her to have a red background." And and the photograph has been shot 
I've gone through a bunch of choices with a photographer and, and landed on the one that I like. And she then has sent me over a, a copy of one. And it's just a black and white Xerox. Just a cheap thing that I can work with. And I can crop it any way I want. And of course, to crop it, I'm gonna have to figure that out. I don't, I don't have the digital tool to do cropping. I'm just gonna have to decide, hmm, that looks, yeah, she's better cropped in. Maybe I should get rid of a little bit more of the hair. Once I figured that out, I'm ready to place her down. And we had the, the fun job of working with things like rubber cement. And we would put that on the back of these things. He's saying rubber cement, where we used to call it as a rubber solution. The advantage of this rubber solution is like once you put that, it doesn't get uh, dried immediately. So it takes almost like three to four minutes to uh, get fixed actually. So by the time we can adjust if any alignments are there, if any center alignment or if any, uh, like if we have, it is entangled or something like that, we can adjust. That's the advantage of this. To get a sense of, well, let's see, how will this work? So I brush it down and I don't have to put too much on it, obviously, because it just has to last until I show it to the client. I put my rubber cement down and I'm ready to lay her down. Now, I also need to mathematically know how wide this is because there's no guides and I can't depend on a center tool to tell me exactly where it is. I have to really check it myself. Now, if I didn't like this, if I'm like, yeah, it's a little too low or a little too high, I can always pick it up. That's the undo feature. You get to just pick this up and say, well, it was like slide her down a little bit. After a day, it's not gonna be that easy once it's dried, but while I'm doing it, it's no problem. So I've got the image down. Yeah, that looks swell. I'm happy with it. Now, in order to get type, it wasn't a matter of like type it in and you get to see, boy, that's, that looks swell in Helvetica. I had to sort of have a sense of what I wanted. Well, gee, do I like Helvetica? Do I want Garamond? I'm not sure. I would take manuscript copy, which was typewritten out, and I would write on it Helvetica 24 point. Um, you know, on 24 points of letting. And I'd send that to a typographer, and the typographer or the typesetter would send it back to me typeset. So they, I'd get these pieces of paper, and I'd have to trim them out, um, and it took about 24 hours to get some type back. So from the time I wrote it up, I told her it, I got this. And because it takes so long, I wanna get as many choices as I can. So I don't have to wait another 24 hours if I don't like this. So I have it set by that typesetter in different sizes and I have it set in different fonts so that I can look at it and say, oh yeah, that Garamond looks pretty good. Or you know what, it's not big enough. Well, I have my 24 point Garamond, that looks better. But you wanted to have those choices and it wasn't simply a matter of change font. It was a 24 hour process, it, it was manual. If I didn't like the kerning on this, if I was like, oh, the letter spacing looks funny, guess what? I get to take my X-Acto knife, cut it out by hand and slowly shift things over, which is not fun, but I have done that for many hours. I've got my headline, got my, my image down. Clients also asked for some additional images. So he's provided me with these images of these slide carousels and, and projectors. Now, the original image came with a, background. I didn't like the background. I wanted it silhouetted. So the only way to silhouette something was to take the image and then this stuff that we called ruby lith. And the ruby lith is this red film. So we make a mask with this, which is why in Photoshop, when you make a mask, it appears as red because it's emulating the ruby lith concept. And I would take the ruby lith and I'd lay it down on top of my image with the full thing, and I would have to manually trim out that silhouette. So I've done a really snappy job trimming this out, let's pretend that, and I've, I've gotten back my image, which looks beautiful, silhouetted on white, and I can decide then where I want these to go. So once again, I've got these little Xeroxes that let me know where they go. They're not in color, so I have to imagine what it looks like in color. Um, because it would be too expensive to try to make color prints at this point if I were gonna cut them up and move them around and try different things. And so I'm happy with my layout. Now I take this to my art director or the client and I show it to them and, and they say, well, we like that a lot. It's looking really good, but we think that model has a funny blemish. Is there anything we can do about that? 
So I'll call the photographer and say, she's got a blemish. Now, it's not a digital file, it's an actual transparency or a print photograph. So the photographer will then take an airbrush, which is a physical object, and they will go in and airbrush all of these pieces on her. It was very expensive, but it was worth it if it was a really important ad or something that had to be fixed. Now, the other thing that might have happened is I've shown this to the client or the art director. The client says, you know what? I think that type needs to be underlined because it's really important. I don't have time to send out for more type. I don't have 24 hours. It has to go to the printer today. So there was this stuff called Letraset and it was rubbed out. Now, I could either use my rapidograph and try to draw the rule, but it had to be perfect. No changes at all in thickness, and that's tricky. Or I could use the letter set. And the letter set were great. I could say, okay, again, where do I want it? I would measure down. I would use my triangle and T-square to make sure it's exactly square. And then that would get rubbed down, and I would have my burnisher and I would rub this down until I got what I wanted. Now this is down there permanently, so I can't change it. And then you had to hope it stuck. And you picked it up and it did, good. Now you can see there's cracks in it, it's not pretty, it never was actually ever flawless. You might also say, you know, I don't like that headline font. Again, I don't have time, so what can I do? I have Letraset, and I know, well, I've got this Helvetica and 42 point in my drawer. What if you, maybe that'll work, he'll like that. And I can do the same thing. Now the end product is going to be not terribly pretty. And there's always a chance he may want something. He said they're too clumsy and this is a mechanical. Now the mechanical has to get overlaid with instructions to the printer, make this red, make this white, make these color images, tells them exactly what I want to have happen here. And then I give it to a messenger and they messenger it over to the, to the printer. Now if something happens to it along the way, if it falls off a truck in the rain and gets ruined, I have to start all over again from scratch. There's no backup of this. So the printer gets it, he has all my instructions, he can put them together, and if he's a good printer, I get something really nice, just like this. So you can see, it was a process that took a lot of manual labor. It was physical skills, and everyone had their own particular way of doing it. But it wasn't just this everyday, all over the place thing that everyone's mother could do. This was an actual graphic art skill. Um, hence the, the insularness of the profession at the time, which was great, but Maybe it's better now that it's much more open and everybody knows what a font is. Yes, I think uh, uh, this video would have given you the insight of how difficult it is to even do a small design way back in uh, almost like 21st years ago. So I did so many artworks like this, what he has uh, done the process. Those days, it is like even if I have to do one layout, sometimes it takes like a three days, four days, like the bromide sheets uh, will take some time to come to us actually. Sometimes that like he said, the font size will be uh, smaller actually. So then I have to reprint again. One day I have to wait to send it to the printer and get the font. Today, the software is like Photoshop. It is simply, you just uh, take a font. If you wanted to increase the size, you can simply increase. So the technology has grown in the span of two decades, actually from 25 years, it has grown tremendously purely because of technology and as well as the photography like even those days when we click photographs i'm i don't know how many of you have seen that film role actual film role so we will have only 30 snips uh, can be taken in that film role and i have to wait for minimum of two to three hours to process it and see the result today you click a picture in mobile and you see it's not looking good delete it and take another one but those days that's not possible only i have to click wait for 20 almost like two hours go to the lab, processes, put a negative and then positive and then print, then see the result. Sometimes my picture will be underexposed actually, but I can't do anything. I cannot go back and change. There's no undo option there. So conceptually, we need to be very sure what we are doing. So when we are doing the design also, when we are taking photograph also using a manual camera, I need to understand what is the aperture, what is the shutter speed, what is the diaphragm. So all these things, I need to understand those details then use the tool, use the equipment which I have. But today's generation, so those things are forgotten actually. So that is one of the main reasons they really quickly want to learn. They quickly wanted to actually like adapt. So that if you actually see those who are 
fundamentally very strong and also learning this digital techniques they really come up very well in that life actually so they solve problems very easily but those really wants to quickly uh, get on to the shortcut using youtube or some other things and if they want to do it they won't sustain for a very long time so for this younger generation i would really like to advise you guys you need to focus more on the foundation and fundamentals you need to understand the concepts of it whatever you are learning that is very important so that that will take you to places that will make you understand the techniques and tools also very easily and you can learn quickly as well wonderful wonderful well said what was the name of that software you told because some of the people have missed it they wrote to me the software is photoshop photoshop illustrator indesign adobe adobe software all the adobe software okay all adobe okay yeah. okay okay so if there is some other question i'll take on yeah meanwhile uh, would you be kind enough to permit me to get these six girls uh, so of that one, a minute each they can speak and you can hear the younger generation yes yes, yes and yes, uh, let them let them say what mr narayanan this evening gave such a wonderful package to all of us and we enjoyed so much so about a minute each we will give it to them and then okay. accordingly we can just uh, proceed on to that Okay. okay and i will change it to the gallery view so that we all are together yes okay sanyogita good evening to you child how are you uh, i'm good sir how are you yeah great evening beta please go ahead let's share your views for a minute uh yes sir so why all your cameras are off you don't want to uh, want us to see or what <laughs> there be these these children it's all up to them it's okay. all up to them. <laughs> yeah because see i understand i understand in uh, during this covid uh, situation we are maintaining social distance but that yeah. doesn't mean we should not see each other actually correct <laughs> <laughs> okay so sanyogita we start with you child uh, okay. yes yeah, yeah please go ahead please go ahead uh, so good evening everyone uh, my name is nogata saren and if i had to tell you what the youth want in one word okay. it is a voice okay. now yes we do have a voice but okay. the opportunity for us to express this voice is quite unfortunately scarce like okay. to have it to have it like express it in a me- in a meaningful manner okay. see today's youth we are extremely intelligent and we are very very aware of current happenings and also we know exactly what we want but the problem is we aren't taken seriously particularly by big politicians even though our ideologies many times are way better than most of the policy decisions taken by governments want proof let's see donald trump who was the president of the biggest economy in the world patronizing greta thunberg the face of the climate struggle telling her to stop throwing temper tantrums and to go to school and this is the same donald trump who doesn't believe in climate change and exited the paris agreement so you tell me who smarter greta or trump we want a voice to give our opinions and policy decisions because these policy policy decisions they are going to have a long term impact that we the youth are going to have to live with and whether this impact is positive or negative it depends completely upon the degree of consideration of the voice of the youth by governments we want a world where everyone is accepted for exactly who they are with no judgments we want a world where climate change a real issue gets real solutions and all of this can only happen when our voice is considered a valuable addition to the social narrative hmm. because you know what the old men taking decisions for us are eventually going to pass on and ultimately it is the youth that are going to have to fix the mess of a world that they may or may not have created so again if i have to tell you in one word what one word what the youth wants it is a voice and okay. to be very honest we aren't going to wait for the adults to give it to us we'll just claim it unapologetically because that's what incites a revolution and mm-hmm. we're going to use our voice to help make this world a better place for all of us thank hey, you hey, i really i really let's go ahead with you yes child khushmi uh, yes sir Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, yes. Am I audible? Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. You are audible. Yeah. Please go ahead, child. 
Yeah, so good evening everyone. I am Kushmeet Kaur Sona and today I decided to talk over a very uh, important issue that is one's dream career. Right now I'm studying in class 12th. Class okay. 12th, right? Okay. Mom, dad, uncle, auntie and even that distant relative whom I've never talked in so many years will Correct. ask me one standardized question as to beta kya banna jaoge. Correct. This point of time, the society will start squeezing you and everybody will throw you and put you in a pressure zone. And the mind goes under so much of pressure that I would say that if you give us coal and put it in our head, we would surely give you diamonds. So uh, when we uh, talk about today's uh, traditional mindset and our parents and our society uh, would prefer medical and engineering rather than those non-conventional professions. But the sad truth here is what about the dream career that we have crumbled into that unconscious part of our brain? Unfortunately, it becomes the least attended thing ever. Perhaps it all boils down to once upon a time, we were a feudal society with limited resources and which, in which hierarchy was everything. In simple words, we are in a revolutionized world. But let us also revolutionize our choices of choosing our life and bring us back that crumbled dream of ours and live with it. Now, at this time, let us also clarify the distinction of the roles of the hand of to listen to, to your brain and to progress in it, listen to your heart. To choose what to do, listen to your brain. To know how to do, listen to your heart. It is as simple as to build a house, listen to what your brain says and to make it your home, listen to your heart. Well, to conclude everything, uh, what should be exactly one's dream career? I would just give this one line explanation of dream career. A dream career should be something that appeals your heart and your brain and not appeals you and not the society. Something that is not people's choice, but your decision. And finally, something that you could spend your entire life with until your hair turned gray. Thank you. Dream career. Okay. Thank you. Dream career. So uh, uh, that word itself, actually, I don't accept dream career. There is no dream career, actually. So every career, if you, act, if you are passionate and if you are doing it with right attitude and right uh, approach, so every career is good. So, for example, how do you identify your dream career? So basically, uh, uh, whatever passion which you have, so whatever, like, whichever things which you are doing, you don't require somebody to tell you to do that particular thing. You are doing it on, on your own without any motivation, without anybody's support. So that is what is your passion is actually. That is your inherent thing which you are doing it automatically. For example, I have shown my uh, skill sets during my childhood. Nobody have to tell me, go and sit and draw actually. So automatically, wherever there is a paper, I take and draw. I While I was doing it, I have discovered my passion in that actually. So when I have discovered passion in art, so I have chosen a career which is more relevant to that particular art. Similarly, you need to each one of the youth people. So at home, you may be doing a lot of things sometimes. So you may be studying sometimes unknowingly. You go and do some dishes. You get involved yourself as a cooking, actually. Every day, you want to cook something. Your, in your subconscious mind, you go and cook something. You create a dish, give it to your father or mother. So that is you're doing it without uh, being forced, without somebody's guidance. You're doing it on your own. So that is where your passion lies. If you take that as a career, you will definitely uh, reach to a pinnacle if you take that as a career. Otherwise... If, you, if your passion says, I want to become a, a great cook, I want to become a gra gra graphic designer, but I see Sachin Tendulkar is making money. I see Shahrukh Khan is making money. So if I wanted to go and become like Shahrukh Khan, it never happens actually. Okay, that is aspiration. You want to become them. You want to make money. So people say dream career means, okay, because that career has great money actually. So that's not that. So everybody, if you are not satisfied with what you are doing, irrespective of money or whatever it is, 
so you will not be able to succeed in that particular field actually so you need to identify what you are inherent tell is telling actually what is the passion what is that which you are doing in at home without somebody's influence without somebody is forcing you what is that which you are doing it on your own try to discover that and then improve your skills and find out which is related to that i am doing this so i like this particular thing so whatever relative career is there uh, let me go and choose that career that's how you choose your dream career actually have i answered your question yes sir okay. yes sir thank you thank you right uh, simran good evening child good evening sir and good evening to everyone watching good evening so i couldn't agree more when and rank one said it's not about who'll allow me it's about who's going to stop me so women empowerment is a hot topic these days and in fact not only these days for a long time it has been a hot topic correct where exactly do we need to be empowered giving us basic rights hmm. in decision making in our households to complex decisions pertaining to the country it is very difficult to digest the fact that we call ourselves a developing nation but if we have to fight for such basic rights i really think we have failed the concept of development as a whole as we all know india is a male dominated nation male dominant in all area and women are responsible for taking care of the family and doing the chores we live in the land the goddesses like lakshmi and durga are worshiped by many including honoring women roles in the society such as that of a mother but we also live in that land where even today women of all ages fear to go out at night alone we live in that land where women are not paid equal wages we live in that land where women have to fight for basic rights we live in that land where until 1950 women weren't even allowed to vote where many girl child are die are for are killed before their birth even today in most of the villages girls are not allowed to go out to school and are just married and are made to start up their own families at such young tender ages so whenever there is a crime in a society like a murder or robbery everyone sympathizes with the family but god forbid if any mishap happens with a girl she is held responsible the sad part is people don't question the rapist for doing such a filthy crime they blame the woman for dressing up that way or behaving in a certain manner the irony here is that there is not only men who consider women inferior or weak even women themselves underestimate the girls honestly it is not even their fault they have been suppressed all their lives and their minds have been conditioned in a way that make them believe that they are inferior to men yes slowly and steadily changes are happening but to get a drastic change in the way the women are being treated we need to start by taking strict measures so like one changing the mindset of the society two making the men believe that women aren't inferior to them and are as strong as they are three as the as change starts from within we women also need to stop underestimating ourselves and our capabilities and gain new confidence in ourselves until unless all the house husbands are normalized as house wives are changes will not take place thank you thank you child thank well you we are running short of we are running well short said, of yeah. time because uh, one minute more is there i got to go for the next webinar to australia okay uh, kavana uh, please go ahead child kavana please go ahead quick yeah unmute your mic unmute your yes, mic yes sir yes sir um 
Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you, sir, for that inspiring uh, journey of yours that you shared with us. That was really inspiring. And uh, I'm also very grateful for this opportunity that you've given us to uh, speak and express our views and given us that opportunity to have our voice being heard by so many people. Um, so I have to talk about education. And as a student, education is something that I do think about on an everyday basis. Now, I think previously I had the idea that our system was something that just didn't promote creativity and it stifled us. It didn't allow us to think for ourselves. And to some extent, I do think that it's true because our system is designed in such a way that was meant for uh, factories and people who could sit for those uh, given hours of days and work for that simple, uh, you know, something that was very easy. But uh, if, in the sense that you just had to follow whatever was given. And that's how a lot of learning is also based on rote learning, on memorization of facts. But at the same time, I don't want to criticize the system completely because I also realize that the fact that we are sitting here, this technology that enables us to talk, or so many different things that are possible, or the mere reason that I am alive and so many other people are alive, says that somewhere as a human race, we have done a lot of good things. And I don't want to deny that. For that, I would like to congratulate all the people who've come, who've sacrificed, who've done so many things. And I do feel very grateful for that. And I feel that yet there is a huge um, journey ahead of us. And for that, education will have to undergo a revolution because with the uh, problems that AI and uh, biotechnology and all these different complicated things bring to our lives, we will have to be prepared for it. As they say that with the coming of AI, a lot of jobs will be changed. Uh, things will not be the way that we know them to be. So for that, we but have to At the to same be time, a lot of opportunities are also there, actually. So. Yes, sir. Uh, exactly. So I think uh, we do have this tendency to be very nihilistic about it and go in a sort of frenzy where we think that uh, doomsday is near. And I do that sometimes myself because it seems like an easy route. But we have to realize and understand that there are opportunities as well as challenges ahead of us. And we have to uh, make use of them and work towards a better future, not just for ourselves, but everybody around us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Anshika, Anshika, unmute your mic quickly, child. Unmute. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. I'll go start. Ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> technology cannot replace great teachers, but technology in the hands of great teachers can be transformational. A very good evening and namaste to everyone present here. While we often hear about the negative effects of excessive screen time and the dangers of excessive technology usage, we do not hear much about the positive ways in which technology makes an impact on our lives, especially when it comes to learning. It is undeniable that in this new normal, without technology, education is like a body without a soul. Due to COVID, um, there has been a strict restriction on the usage of the school premises. But despite that, and I'm very proud that my education continues and my school is functioning all thanks to technology. It will be safe to say that technology knows no barriers. But this example that I just put forward is more cosmopolitan in, in existence. The news is evidence to the fact that now, even in remote and rural areas of our country, where education had almost halted due to the pandemic, we see that teachers took up the initiative, recorded their voices, and under full precautions, these audios were taken from village to village and played on speakers for students to actually listen to and learn from, so that education and learning continues. Technology has provided us with the outlet or opportunity to join various webinars on a diverse range of topics, like this webinar itself, from the comfort of home, and also webinars where all of us youngsters can connect with universities worldwide, online, and for free, making us aware of the bright prospects that the future holds for us. This can be called a feat which would have been impossible to achieve before. Just like parents and students, even teachers benefit from technology. They can easily connect with their whole class via facilities like WhatsApp and are only a click away in case any doubts arise. Teachers can also connect with their own colleagues online and 
easily perceive professional development from the comfort of their own home and device. Example, the Nishtha courses that CBSC had put out for the professional development of teachers. For students, university classes and entire degree programs can be taken up online on platforms like Udemy and Coursera. Looking back in history, the usage of print technology had helped organize the procedure of training for all the civil service aspirants in China by providing them a fixed and uniform set of books to study from. Well, wasn't that something impressive? As the last point, we can look proudly at how our government, by making optimal usage of television, radio, and internet facilities, has set up things like the TV channel called TV Swayam Prabha and the Diksha portal available online, providing us resources like PDF formats of our textbook chapters that were of great utility, at least for me, in the COVID-19 situation, when stepping out of the house for buying my books was unsafe. To conclude, I would like to say that we need technology in every classroom and in every student and teacher's hand because it is the pen and paper of our time and it is the lens through which we experience much of our world. Thank you and Namaste. Thank you. Thank you, Anshika. Thank you very much, Satish Narayanji. It was a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much, Simran. Thank you very much, Kushmi. Thank you very much, Kavanya. Uh, Kavana, thank you very much, Sandyotika, and thank you very much, Anishka. God bless all of you. It was a pleasure to have such a wonderful evening. Thanks a lot. God bless everybody in India. You all should remain 